Hello, this is an AI daily game that White won by resignation uh, after the second in the top left corner, which cost Black about six or seven points. So this way, White actually wins by Komi, when in fact uh, Black was probably half point ahead. Actually, it's hard to say because if Black captures here instead of allowing the Seki, White can Atari first. Black needs to connect or capture the stone, and then White will erase this point too. So Black needs to connect. Black builds uh, six points in the top left corner capturing the two stones but it's way better than Seki because Seki was zero points so after the Seki white it's uh, comb your head therefore um, black resigned so let's see how this game developed <clears throat> modern Fuseki very common nowadays to play that uh, two space Aishimari low approach it's uh, common too then the one space tight pincer in this case this can be fancy but it's not too complicated uh, Kema very well then the old-fashioned uh, counter pincer so according to ai in this position it's more common to push a few times even three times because black is not going to allow the hane and double hane and then play a counter pincer which is a bit further away from the wall but it's also in front of uh, black shimari because for black it's quite ideal to extend k16 so you can, it's enough to push only two times and then go for the pincer then when black goes for sumitsuki you simply descend it's also possible to play the Hane, Atari, and then extend again towards the Shimari. So when you play the Hane and Atari, it's just to take Sente. Because the descent many times will be caught and Black will play something around here. And then when White jumps in the corner, this is just endgame. Black can still uh, extend on the side. So back to the original game. We have a fancy move. Um, the old fashioned way is to jump out at N14. Then White will just attach and connect under. So this would be... A classic Joseki. White is very big to go in the corner, but it's also uh, important to play a move to prevent the expansion on the right side, like R7, and then from R7 extend again to R10 or Q10 if uh, Black allows that. Now, if Black turns in the corner, White can defend in the top. So, this is uh, the old fashioned Joseki, but Black tried to play a fancy move, the second line split to be uh, more fighting. So, White uh, covers, this is good. This cut, mm, it's a bit questionable for black. Usually, black should push through, and then uh, if white connects right away, black will push again. But here, white can uh, push inside the corner first at Q15, and after that connect. But in this case, black is not going to push and cut. It's better for black to play Q17, white connects, and black will try to link under. But there are still lots of cutting points. Uh, the wedge here, this cut, and this one. So white can work with all those cuts uh, and use his thickness for um, more prospects in the center later. This is a, a pretty full sequence, but uh, let's see. Let's see actually what happens if black pushes and cuts like this. So white can go Atari, and then the idea is to set up a Miai in order to capture some stones. So white will just descend S17. If white goes down R18 and black captures a stone, when white plays the cut on the right side, black can resist with Atari and push, and the corner will die. So uh, white is going for outside influence, but black keeps all the points in the corner. So, however, uh, if white uses S6, S17, uh, black needs to capture the stone in the top to keep the two stones connected, but now white will catch the two stones on the right side. Because even if black goes Atari here, and then he tries to win the semi, white is faster. So there are only two liberties for black. This is a disaster for black. Now, if black connects on the right side, white will catch the top two stones, and the other four stones are in trouble too. So here black needs to play a 4 move like this and then try to come out. But then white will take the extension on the right side. So again, this is a collapse. Not good for uh, black at all. Therefore, uh, when this happens, black needs to play a Kosumitsuke. And then on this move, connect underneath. <clears throat> and if white goes down here, when black pushes and white cuts, uh, black can take away liberty at Q18. Otherwise, it's tricky again. I mean, if uh, black plays here, we have the wedge, then Atari, then Atari again, and turn. So black group dies again in the top. Very tactical situation. But back to the original game. So black play the cutting point. Ane, white cuts. Obviously, white wants to fight. Black nobi, this is okay. And white should push inside first. This exchange is very important. Now, there are two ways. If black protects here, white will cover. And actually, this is very good for white, because this exchange 
already took away some liberties for uh, black in this fight. So now when black plays uh, Q17, white can actually uh, wedge, then Atari, play the squeeze, and then Han in the corner. So again, it's difficult for black. Black will push like this and probably come out, but it's still tricky because of the push and cut on the outside. Now if black takes a stone, he will lose the rest. Hmm. Actually, this is super difficult for black. Black needs to play Kema on the second line, which is more painful. Then the corner is in trouble. When white goes inside the corner, black needs to connect around here. White can also catch this stone. So overall, the result is good for white. Therefore, if this happens, uh, black needs to go for a compromise variation, which means push through here and come out. Now, of course, white can just go inside the corner. Black can take a Ponuki. White can turn. Uh, there is Aji in the corner. I mean, black can try this Q17 and again go for a connection underneath and so on. But this can wait. Uh, black can use a little later this Aji. Anyway, overall, uh, this is a situation where both black and white are okay. Kind of 50-50. Because black got a Ponuki here and starts attacking the two heavy stones in the top. But in the meantime, white uh, ruined the position in the corner. So this kind of trait should be expected. It shows more fighting spirit both for black and white. Therefore, <clears throat> white missed the opportunity to push on the right side. So just connect. Now push through. Mm, white can take that stone in the ladder, but it's very big to push here still. And also separate. Because even if black comes out here, the fight is uh, not too bad. I mean, well, black still builds a lot in the corner, but white can defend in the top and make a base and also secure the group on the right side. So this is a fight that it's okay overall, but slightly better for black, because black just got a, a nice corner here. So white kind of missed the timing to push on the right. Yeah, this is a ladder, but black doesn't care so much. Black can just block here and keep all the points. <clears throat> ah, even stronger. I mean, well, with this move, uh, black was afraid of the peep, but in fact, this group in the corner is not going to leave. It's very difficult to make it leave. Let's see, tuck, tuck. Oh, or maybe it does. Oh, maybe I misread. Actually, black can block here. And when white cuts, black will do this. Yeah, it doesn't leave in the corner. So it's just that. So black wanted to be safe. But overall, this is okay. Black got the corner and white has some kind of thickness on the outside. But it's difficult to build too much with that. So, yeah, black got away with the overplay. Because this N18 feels a bit tricky. It's not the kind of move you see uh, most of the time. So very good approach at C12. Black pincers, this shows fighting spirit. Attach here is good too. That's the usual follow-up. Then connect, this is all forced. But now, it's more common for white to push like this. Because usually black will jump out and then prepare... Uh, the nose Tisuji at f16. So if white defends the left side, black will go for the capture in the top. But in the meantime, white also hurt the stone on the left side. Now, if white saves the stones in the top, like uh, turning or jump out, then black can push through here, then uh, cut on the outside and capture two stones. But this is fine because black really uh, work hard to capture the two stones. So white got the position in the top and also on the left side. So it feels quite normal to expect this variation. But white connected solid, in fact. So black covers, push again, then Hane. Okay, so black got a little wall. Now he goes on a counter attack. This attack is very big. Yeah, so white get out. This is forced. Turn, that's also good. So black needs to leave in the corner. Actually, for black, it's better to play D19. <clears throat> white still needs to play here. And when black pulls back to connect the stone, white needs to jump. Then if black plays another move in the corner like this, to secure uh, the ice, then there are the cutting points on the left side. So white has to come back at b8. Uh, black can push a couple of times here to make the wall uh, solid. This is also most likely sente. Actually, this exchange could be played earlier for black to make sure that white will connect before he even leaves in the corner. And now just play big point somewhere else the bottom side so let's see the actual game black connects in a solid way but this leaves b18 a lot of agi 
Well, first of all, white needs to connect here. Then white play the Hane. Instead of Hane, the shape point is J17. This is the proper way. But even when white plays the Hane, uh, if black plays the, the Hane in center here, white will no be. And if black cuts, white can actually capture the stones. So just Atari and go down. Now, of course, black can play one forcey move here. Then if white tries, sorry, if black tries to connect underneath with Atari and this move, you just Atari from the outside and that's it. You win the semi by one liberty. You don't need to throw in or anything like that. Now, if uh, black plays the throw in, white captures, black is in Atari, black needs to connect and white will take the two stones faster. So black gets to play all these forcey moves, but black still needs to secure the corner. So after this happens, again, white should come back and protect against the cuts. If white doesn't play a move like b8 or c8, let's say white plays Shumari here, black will just cut one time. Now, if white captures a stone, black will use it, uh, will capture the tail. And if uh, white connects here, black can attack like this, because the ladder is just working. So again, white will lose the group on the side. Or if uh, white goes down, black captures a stone, then white has to come back and make ice. But this is very painful for white. So super tactical this fight in the corner. Uh, white played Atari underneath in order to prevent all those uh, force moves from the outside and push a couple of times, that's fine. Now white has to leave. Oh, actually for white it's big to play this move because white is already uh, going out and it's threatening the three stones. It's true black can connect here and white has to come back. Yeah, so this will be got eh? Therefore, white tries to kill the corner. But it's a bit tricky because the group in the top is not completely alive. So here, uh, block, that's fine. White went down. This is good for white because black could always play this B15 to take away liberties and prepare the cut at B9. So that's all nice. Oh, and for now, black is actually almost dead in the corner. The way for black to live in the corner is to play B19. And when white goes Atari C19, black will start a co-fight. This is the way to live right now. Then in this core fight, um, black can play here, threatening a snapback, take back the core. Or of course, black has core threats like um, cut, uh, wait, like this, or like this. <clears throat> then when white captures, there's another core threat and another core threat and the cut, lots of local threats here. But anyway, there's a core fight because if um, white goes down, black can play C18. And now he's alive uh, unconditionally. So once black plays b19, the only way to try to kill this group is to play c19 and then black can block here, take the core and fight it. If black connects, white connects and now he's dead. So let's see what happened. Probably at this stage, maybe black felt, okay, the corner is dead. He has to, to move away and uh, try to build more territory somewhere else. And he got this base. This is a big point. Submarine invasion, that's fine. Well, black wants to build a lot on the right side. Therefore, white can play this kind of move to put pressure. Then uh, black will live in the corner in Gote and white can extend from the wall. And this extension, it's uh, attacking H3 base, which means black will either jump out or slide in the corner. Now, this is a center variation and you can play... Push here is big. Put pressure here, it's also big. Well, this push at D9, it's a move to prevent uh, Black's press in Sente. But also, um, you can play another move in the top left corner. Something to kill the group unconditionally. Maybe just go down. In because of the uh, force he moves on the top. So, let's see what happened. Block the corner. White. Ooh, white is supposed to go out here. Then when, uh, uh, sorry, Black goes up at R5. When white connects solid. Black extends all the way to R9. This is a simple Joseki. This way, uh, white gets to play R5 and it's a nice key point. And from this move, white can also invade R10. Therefore, black needs another move around here. Yeah, he played R11, keeping uh, simple on the third line. Everything is safer. Kick, very good. Then take away the extension. Yeah, this was pretty good flow for white. And expand the bottom side more. Very nice. So black got a little bit over concentrated. White has territory on the left, on the right. And now all white has to do is uh, keep the top left corner dead and probably is slightly ahead on points. Yeah, this game is possible, but it's more interesting for black to push to make sure he will play that exchange in center. Then Tsuke here, 
and bump one time <clears throat> uh jump once and think about surrounding the top well he did surround the top uh this is not so big the proper move on the left side is just double up because this is actually where black wants to go next this clamp and then if you play something here he will go atari then nobi and keeps everything low on the left side oh he never did so he yeah now here when white leaves in the top the way to leave is to descend because this descent prevents e19 in center if black turns on the right you go down again and you have this l formation which is alive because uh in this kind of l shape when uh, black plays h19 you have g19 if he plays g19 you have h19 so it's already alive with uh, three points but playing like this black can go down at e19 then when white defends to uh, prevent being forced uh, black can play c19 and now the group is alive no way to force his eyes or to create a sec anymore or, or a co-fight anymore so uh, yeah black went out first white sacrifice the right shape here is to play this kind of move because when you jump like that black can go here threatening the cut then you must connect and this is like a false eye and then he can attack the whole thing but playing the move around here this can give you some eye shape so if black comes here then you jump like this much easier to fix two eyes in the middle mm, interesting jump black should play something to stay more connected like this because now obviously white can just go in between and keep going then turn and chase the whole thing oh take away the base here um this can wait it's more interesting to play something on the right side and just try to catch this stone on a large scale and it's a lot of territory so remove the base that atari wasn't really necessary this kosumitsuki is good then cover and black it's pretty much alive hmm nice territory on the left side so many stones though uh let's see here yeah actually white doesn't have to play anything still more interesting to cut this stone but somehow white got a big territory in this lower side so left side it's all safe now this group needs to stay alive in the middle uh it's interesting to play a shoulder hit then jump again because leaning on the right side keeps uh black low imagine you play this one too and then you block so you already create some eye shape and the territory on the right side gets smaller for black but also okay to jump out when in danger yeah this cut is very good especially after these jumps in the middle they seem to connect and create a nice border so well done on this combination oh but now you can just block this way because if black cuts you push like this if you honey you come out if he pushes again you come out if he pushes again you come out or you block and that's it the two stones die here on a large scale so black doesn't gain much on the right side but white builds a lot this way black can try to connect under oh he could do this then when white pushes block when atari connect you need to protect against the cutting point and he links under so now white didn't gain because black managed to connect the important stones but now white can cut again oh la la even bigger now in this case it's interesting to jump this way and then play the tiger mount because this will be the connection so white builds more i mean when you play here if he plays the nobi or the hane you need to block then he pushes and you build less but when you play the one space jump uh, like this you're going to build more on the wedge it's atari connect and defend so the shape is absolutely fine but anyway it's a matter of a couple of points extra it can count because this was uh, like a half a point game in the end so let's move on black connected here uh this one is not necessary you can play it anytime and it's your center so let's say uh white goes uh, hane and nobi like this black will never hane on the first line because when you block he can't connect because you capture everything so he needs to go back then you take the stone and it's like you are getting the hane a t5 for s7 and also it's much more interesting to play the cut one time and then atari because this will create some cutting uh, some cutters later in the last stage when you fight the core for the last half a point 
But yeah, Black didn't care. This is good. He tried the Trainess formation. All right. So here, if White plays Hane first, <clears throat> this is a move to threaten the snapback. But of course, Black will be tempted to cut the cornerstone instead of connecting here. So if he cut, cuts right away, uh, White will go for a snapback because I mean it's a dumb it's money. If Black plays here, obviously it's a snapback. But Black can capture the cornerstone. Now you will say, okay, okay, but if White connects E1, it's self Atari. But in this case, White just captures another stone. Now this is threatening to catch four more stones in the middle. Black will play this one and go for a call. You connect. He needs to protect again against the cutting point somehow. And the corner just died. So when he plays two and four to capture that stone in the corner, he's losing everything. Which means this is excellent timing. You play F1, he connects, and then you decide whether you want to connect here, which is a five points connection, or you play some other big point. For example, you play in the corner to get rid of the uh, Koaji, like this, and then if he captures this stone, when you feel behind, you can start the code A2 and then keep going. And when he plays here, you play Atari and the coids keep going. But if you're not behind, you just give up the stone and you actually lose five points. So you don't always have to connect the B2 as a reflex. Of course, if you connect, uh, he can also go G1 and connect here to make sure he will build the two points. But the idea is to play the Hane F1 because it's absolute center. He needs to connect here. So you destroy the two points. Then whether you connect or not, it's another uh, issue. But that can wait. So yeah, he block here. Therefore, yeah, here you need to block and keep the territory. That's fine. But this hand at f1 is super big and it's also always center. Because every time you play here, you're threatening the step back to catch two, four, six, seven points, actually eight. And destroy this one. It can be nine points. So capture one stone. Yeah, you better take it. Take the stone. If he plays Atari here, just play away. This was some sort of uh, wishful thinking that black will connect here and then you catch the stone. <coughs> so that made the game closer. Okay, white got the snapback preparation move. This capture was big because it creates a T8 in center next. Ah, uh, and black found the move to leave in the corner finally. So because white didn't go down F19, now it's about time to leave. Yeah, you can do this. Must just connect. I mean, you can't kill anymore. So this is a bit tricky actually. Park, 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 park. Yeah, black needs to play here first. Then when white goes down to try to kill the group, black will force the eye in the top. And you don't have enough liberties to fight the semi. Because on this move, he can play here. Then when you go down, you will play this one. Then when you play Atari take, when this one, throw in, take, connect. You must connect, Atari defend, and Hane. So there are only two liberties. White needs to play here. Black can play away. White Atari, take three stones, play inside. Now it's two against two. So he will kill the top. Therefore, um, Black can play C19 or A18. Then White has to leave, and Black will play another move. Well, it's similar to what happened in the game. This can still be a little bit tricky, but yeah, no time to go for the kill because if you play C19, he plays here, you capture, he connects, you need to connect or to play this way, but now he goes Atari from the outside because he's got two more liberties, so there is no way to create the bulky five. Yeah, so defend, black defense, but the way black defends here, it's wrong because he needs to play A18 and then there will be no Seki at the end anymore, so he beats two, four, six, seven, eight points. Uh-huh. No, wait. Two, four, five, six, seven in the end. Yeah, so he could win the game much more comfortable by one point and a half. Okay, that was all Sente. Yeah, this one is super big. So when you feel behind, you can play this peep. Then when he connects here, you cut, he goes at that, you take, he goes at that, you connect, and then he takes these stones. Well, when you connect, he needs to go back and connect too. Otherwise, it's going to be a peep at S10 and destroy 5 points with that maneuver. This is a 1 point gote. Block, very good. And then the lucky sec at the end. Anyway, spectacular game. Uh, the start looked very good for black because white didn't push inside at Q15. 
Then top left corner was a bit shaky for black, it could die. Then the rest of the, yeah, this lower side where white got the two stones super big, so white came back in the game a lot. And then again the life and death situation in the top left corner. Very good game by both, and I'm pretty sure uh, both of you can do better next time. Enjoy the review.